well, I'm all done for the evening. Uh, fairly uneventful evening. I figured it probably would be. Not much you could do. There's a couple of horses in there that looked really good coming in. We had the outside post in a 10 horse field on a half mile track. Mel has not been on his best. I was skeptical as to how things would play out uh, tonight. Now, now, he warmed up good. It felt really good. But again, uh, it looked like he was at least a full second behind where he needed to be to be competitive in there. That's not even taking into account the eight hole. So, uh, you know, I, we were up against it. And I really was just going to leave it up to him. I knew that the gate is kind of moving odd here. Uh, the, the new starter is just kind of getting his bearings, I think, with the gate. And if you watch, you could be two, three lengths off the gate, even from the eight hole coming out of the turn. And you could be right on top of it, as they say, go. It's weird. Um, but, you know, as I had said to the gentleman the first night, if you just do the same thing every time, um, no one no one can complain they just have to conform right so um i got a good jump on them coming off the car i looked left and both the favorites were leaving some heavy hitters on the inside so i started to drift left and um horse on the rail i, I forget who it was not the rail horse but the horse to the to the inside of me had made a break big spot opened up and i dropped in i was going to get a great trip behind uh the favorite or second favorite justin's horse uh, jogged last week. The other horse that jogged was on the front, so I'm hoping the one first over is the better of the two, and he drags me up into it. You know, Mel kicks home, like the old Mel, somewhat, and um, you know, we get to the winner's circle. It's a it's a plausible finish. I look a little closer, and um, Hunter's got a death grip on this thing starting into the back stretch. He looks live. Justin's horse looks a little bit soft. Uh, and the horse in the, the two hole looked like he hit a little pop still. So it it wasn't looking uh, as good as it was just a few pylons before. <laughs> um, we got into the last turn. I thought I saw Justin's horse kind of look behind him. I, I thought he was maybe just sizing up the backfield. I found out what he was looking at later. Or what he was listening to. Um, Mel flattened, never passed the horse in front of him down the lane. They went in 57. I, I, I called, I would call it... I was really torn as we went under the wire because I thought he raced as good or better than he's been racing. I was happy with the way he, he mechanically, the way he felt, but disappointed with the way he finished up. And as I said to Jason pulling up, I can't really be angry because he really feels like he tried as hard as he could. Now the million dollar question is why? Where did the fifth gear of Mel Gibbs one go? Where is Mel Gibbs one? that's not him now we've seen horses he's not the only one not this year not any year that doesn't come back strong but there's just something I just couldn't put my finger on it and I didn't but someone else did I was somebody else had to be on their horse later on in the later race and Justin Irvine come up to me and he said uh <laughs> He made reference to a video I said last week. I said, Mel Gibson, it just, he's not, not the same horse. He said, your horse was making an awful noise in behind me getting into the last turn. And I remember as he said it, I saw him in the race turn around and kind of look at my horse. And drivers will do that. If I get a horse on my back that's roaring, I might just look maybe to see whose horse it is or just a, just a look. It happens all the time. And he's, he's made noise. You guys remember I said he made noise. We had him scoped. Um, but I didn't I didn't hear him make it in the race. I didn't. And usually when you hear a horse making a noise, you can almost feel it in the lines, right? You can feel that vibration. You know it before you can hear it or at the same time. Or it's just confirming what you are hearing. You can feel it. I never heard him make a noise. Not a loud roar, but I'll tell you what he is doing. I would bet as much as you want to bet that he's displacing in a mile. Now, some horses can do that. They'll flip and flip back. And I think it's more of a nervous thing. But why is he nervous? He raced all last year and never did this. Trained down, never did this. A couple of times getting close to qualifiers, we really stretched him out. He did it, but that's not uncommon for horses either. 
And when we've scoped them, there was no real distinct irritation. I bet you there is tomorrow. So I guess the biggest question is, why is he doing it? And then the follow-up to that question would be, how do we fix it? I can't answer that, either of them. But luckily, we have smarter people than me that we associate with all the time. I'll run it by Dr. Latessa tomorrow. I'll run it by Dr. Brown also. I'm sure Dr. Latessa will. Um, for those of you, now we've had this done a couple of times. I've only seen it at the Meadows last week. I saw somebody training their horse. It's called the dynamic scope. And the, the actual, the horse wears the scope during, during a training mile so they can see what's going on in there. Will that shed some light? Maybe. I don't know. But I can tell you one thing. I went from warming sadly warming to the idea that maybe Mel just didn't come back good after the conclusion of the 13th race to after my discussion just a brief discussion with Justin Irvine that maybe there's more to it than that so my job tomorrow aside from training all the babies and training a couple of horses before I go to the meadows we'll be discussing this very thing with Dr. Latessa asking him to scope Mel Gibson I suspect after hearing Justin say that we're going to find some bruising on his palate I hope not an ulcer. That's a pesky bugger. Probably some bruising on his palate. And I don't know what else uh, a simple scope can shed. From there, I'm assuming Dr. Latessa will talk to Dr. Brown. And we'll try and formulate a plan. But this would explain. This is not only the most likely explanation, but an easy explanation also. Very easy. Almost one plus one equals two. The horse is missing an entire gear. I haven't seen him get up into top gear since I started training him when he was getting close to the train to qualifying. And this could easily be an explanation as to why. The fact that I never heard it, never felt it, other than that one time training, is odd. I'll admit it's odd. But it was confirmed by the person that was closest to his nose, closer to his nose than anybody else today, and did it during the race. This was at the three-quarter pole with his nose right near his helmet, so there wouldn't be another human being on earth that would have a better vantage point than Justin Irvine tonight with Mel Gibson. And what he said to me was a very telling, uh, very telling story. So uh, Mel Gibson, I guess we've somewhat figured out what the issue is, how we address it why it's occurring and how we fix it are the questions that still need answered and we'll get to that tomorrow but for tonight a fifth i don't know what he trotted but it was a an okay mile you know if he was your run of the mill now where's a two horse it's a yeah, he raced okay he's not is he he's a much better horse than that so we'll get to the bottom of it um for everybody else we're training all the babies tomorrow i'll give you a a lengthy report as it's a two-hour drive to the Meadows, um, but we have five sets going tomorrow. A lot of people saying, hey, Anthony, I was looking at the sets, and this one here is over here, and this, guys, you have to understand, um, some of you have the set list, and you look in the back end, and you get to look at that set list. That's me working in the back end. Uh, there's a number of horses scratched that, we've been tra that I trained on Monday, trained hard. Uh, for various reasons. Some of them I trained because I wanted to get a closer look at them by themselves. I wanted to stretch them out a bit and have a, 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 just a clean look at them. And there were a few horses like High High Hopes that I couldn't fit into sets. I had other horses to go with. And I knew that she would train better by herself right now um, at the speed I wanted to go. So I trained her by herself. You know, we have five sets of horses going tomorrow. And I will give you an update on all of them um, once we are finished. So with that, I'll let you go. I will talk to you all tomorrow. It's almost midnight. You're gonna have to get to bed. Take care.